Hey, Jared, this is episode 40 of the Rule Your Pool podcast. Can you believe it? I can, because we're sitting here about to about to just crush it. Oh, we're going to crush it all right with minimal preparation, because that's what we do here at the Rule Your Pool podcast. But 40 episodes, I, that's a lot more than I thought. We've just had fun. I guess time flies when you're having fun. Uh, tons of fun. Yeah, we're going to have some fun today. I should say, you've been so busy that the crowd has just been yearning for more Jared. I, mm. I can't tell you how many people, because it was none, it was zero. I can't tell you how many people were just like, please, please, we need more Jared on the podcast. Zero people. Nobody did it. We should give the zero what they asked for then. That's right. Jared is back. Now, in this episode, uh, it's getting colder. We're in October now. And um, a lot of questions coming in about how to winterize, because... They know that we know how to do that, and they've read articles on the calcium crystals. And I think if you've ever had calcite crystals in your pool or winter dust or discolorations or whatever else, there's some PTSD associated with that, and nobody wants that to happen twice. So we get a lot of questions. What do I need to do? And one of the first questions that we ask, Jared, is the topic of today, which is... What kind of pool cover do you have? Yes. We're going to talk about pool covers today because the type of cover you have matters to how you have to winterize it. And we've mentioned this in previous episodes a little bit, but is there anything you want to add before we get into this? Uh, just having hands-on experience with putting a pool cover on about 10 minutes ago, I'm very uh, you know, acquainted with the process. I, <laughs> I say that I love it. Um, but that's actually kind of why I want to talk about it today is maybe I get out some frustration. Was this on your pool or on a customer's pool? It, it was on a customer's pool, the only pool cover that we deal with. Um, mm. And I dread it every year mm. and every spring. Well, you would not last long in the Northeast or the Midwest because they cover every year and you live in Texas. But uh, yes. anyway, episode 40 of the Rule Your Pool podcast. I'm your host, Eric Knight, and Jared Morgan's with me. Let's go. Welcome to Rule Your Pool, the podcast by Arenda that explains and simplifies pool chemistry so that anybody, regardless of experience, can understand it. I'm your host, Eric Knight, bringing clarity to these subjects so that you can bring clarity to your water. If you're ready to rule your pool, then let's go. Now, before we get started, there is a matter that I think we need to address here, Jared. What does your shirt say? Maybe I'm reading that wrong. Says Slytherin. It does say Slytherin on it, but I am wearing an Arenda hat. Yeah, I can't. I can't help but notice it's not an Arenda shirt. It's a Slytherin shirt, and I myself, um, if I cared, might take personal offense to that. Now, you don't strike me as much of a Slytherin. You seem more of a Ravenclaw to me. Well, my uh, my kids might disown me if I uh, mm. didn't wear a Slytherin shirt. So. Okay. I'm also more of a Ravenclaw guy, but okay, I'm well, trying I, we, to see if my kids notice. Yeah, we won't tell. We won't tell them. Just make sure they don't listen to the podcast. One thing for sure. I don't want to give them any hints. One thing's for sure. There's no Hufflepuffs in your house. No, no. Good. Well, Good. okay. I like. I, I'm trying to see if they enjoy me wearing the Harry Potter shirts, but to date, I haven't had any acknowledgement. So it's a pretty uh, futile effort here on my part. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Well, in any way, uh, let's uh, let's talk about pool covers and get out of the world of Harry Potter and into the real world. Mm. The type of pool cover you have is going to make a big difference on how you have to winterize. Now, we know uh, that temperature drives the LSI changes when you're talking about the winter, and that's what we really need to talk about. So as the temperature drops, your LSI drops as well, which means you need more things in your water, generally calcium, higher pH, higher alkalinity, to compensate for that lower temperature. The reason that's relevant to pool covers is because the type of cover is going to impact how much your pH can change and how much your calcium might get diluted. So, Jared, do you want to expand on that? Yes, because I actually had a phone call this morning from a customer in Ohio that uh, was he had problems with crystals on a very new plaster, which was weird but that's another topic for another so, day uh, it's not that weird i mean it's usually the first time you get crystals usually within your first year of plaster but i'm uh, six weeks oh wow yeah we could have that topic another day that might yeah. be a deep dive so yeah. but either way i said hey i'm glad you called 
I'm going to give you a set of procedures. I'll email them to you. And just by the way, when you winterize the pool, make sure you follow the winterizing process. And I said, you know, a lot of times rain will dilute the calcium in your chemicals, uh, depending on what kind of cover you had. And I just mm -hmm. made the assumption he had a mesh cover. Well, he informed me that they pretty much do all heart covers, mm -hmm. which is great. So I had to quickly adjust and pivot a little bit, but the process is still the same. It's just your, your, the way you manage it throughout the winter is a little different. The parameters are different. You still close yes. it the same way, but the levels of chemistry are different. Now, when you say hard cover, you mean solid cover, like a solid vinyl cover, right? Yeah. So nothing's getting through it uh, during the winter. He said it pretty much, it does not really freeze. Uh, the water level maintains constant, uh, but it does get cold, obviously, because it is in the mm -hmm. ground. But he doesn't Ohio. get the dilution. Yeah, he doesn't get the dilution factor. Mm -hmm. Got it. So uh, we're going to touch on that. And we have an article on our blog, Arenda Tech. If you go to our website, it's also in articles in the Arenda app. If you don't have that on your phone, you're probably new to listening to this podcast, but it's a free app just called Arenda. Go to the main menu, hit articles, type in cover. You're going to find it. Pretty easy to find. Like Jared said, Dilution is a very important factor when it comes to winterization because you've got several months of basically not treating your pool. Now, one thing that we like and we advocate for at Arenda is easing your pool into winter and easing it out of winter in the springtime. So if you can do it over multiple treatments, that's always preferred as opposed to one treatment and close. Okay, that's always a better thing. And in the last episode, I talked about the importance of LSI with winterization. So we're not really going to dwell on that necessarily. We're really going to focus on just the differences between the types of covers. But before we do that, there are other types of covers that have nothing to do with winterization. And since the name of this podcast episode is pool covers, I feel like it's worth mentioning them. In season, for instance, uh, indoor pools or summer pools, they might use a thermal blanket, which is a, a sort of thick buoyant material so it'll stay floating on the top and it's just designed to hold heat in and minerize minerize minimize evaporation oh. solar yeah. blankets are, are also yeah the the other one's a solar topic. blanket exactly and they look yeah. like blue bubble wrap and these are very effective at minimizing i said it right that time minimizing evaporation letting the sun heat that pool keeping the heat in because the vast majority of heat loss and water loss by the way is through evaporation. So if you can minimize the evaporation rate, you're going to minimize that water loss and that energy loss in that pool. So those are, you know, they're not for winterization because uh, as a swimmer, I can tell you, it is not safe to have those covers without some sort of barricade around that pool because animals and people, whether it's adults or, pe or children, if they walk on that bubble wrap, they're gonna sink. It's not gonna hold their weight up. That's very different from a winterization cover. And there's three types. Jared, do you know what those three types are? I'm going to go with mesh, mm -hmm. hard, solid cover. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go with that. There's also, well, that's kind of automated with the automated rolling cover. But yeah, that's, that's exactly right. The automated cover. That's a hard which cover. Is also, it is. Yeah, as, well, as we I guess it can a be a vinyl. Well, it, Not yeah, I mean, sure. the point is you either have it automated on tracks or you install it as a safety cover that is bolted down on several areas around the deck. And the safety covers are designed to withstand the weight of animals and people and stuff so that you do not fall in. In fact, there's pictures online that cars can actually be held up by these things. Not that it's recommended to drive a car onto it, but it really proves the point that these are very, very strong safety covers. The most common is mesh in most markets, but they they also come in solid. And sometimes you have solid ones that actually have a hatch in the middle that allow water to come in, which kind of complicates this episode, but it's worth mentioning. So let's get into it. What do you want to talk about first? Mesh, solid, or automatic, Jared? Um, let's go with mesh just because that's the one I just put on. And like I said, you're right. It is mainly a safety feature and to keep debris out. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, down here in Texas, it does get cold. Um, so the parameters are a little different, but the premise is the same. And when things land on that cover and they melt or rain gets in there, you're going to have a dilution factor that has to be managed. Mm -hmm. That's true. Now, from a cleanliness standpoint, mesh covers will 
act sort of like a coffee filter or a, a, a tea bag full of herbs. Like if you have a bunch of leaves, pine cones, pine needles, whatever, and it gets rain and snow on there, tannins from these breaking down uh, organic material, I'll just call it, dead leaves and grass clippings and stuff, that stuff is going to leak into the pool on a mesh cover. And it can cause organic stains. It can cause discoloration of the water. This is why we advocate for enzymes on closing. If, Of course, if you've already been using enzymes all summer, just let it ride. You already have them in there. But if you don't, you might want to purge before you go and close that pool. You want to do it when the water's warm enough so that they're activated because that can actually really help get that organic material taken care of. Chlorine alone is not going to be around long enough to handle this because it's already going to get used up, whereas the enzymes will be in there through the duration of the winter. But that's not really Hopefully the focus. Hopefully help you out on the spring and the opening too. That's that's the key here. Yeah, because when the water warms up, they'll activate again. And that's just on the cleanliness side. Um, a mesh cover allows the transfer of water and it allows the transfer of gas. Okay, so this is a very important difference between a solid cover, which doesn't allow either of those two things. A mesh cover is going to allow CO2 to escape, which as we know, as we drive so so persistently on the physics of how water behaves, Henry's law comes into effect. The CO2 will leave, allowing your pH to rise up to its ceiling. That's usually a very, very good thing. That's a big advantage that mesh covers have, in my opinion, if you are managing the LSI, predicting that. If you don't, it could be problematic because you're going to have a high pH, and in the springtime, you could actually get some scale. Although it's very rare, you wouldn't have it in the fall, you can have it in the spring as the water warms up. So it's just something to be aware of. You want that pH to be accounted for that it's going to be up to its ceiling. Because on that note, everybody knows and remembers that as the water temperature goes up, the likelihood of scale forming increases. Yeah, it's because the LSI goes up. Mm -hmm. So by allowing the pH to go up, that means that you don't necessarily need as much alkalinity in those pools when you winterize but you need a lot more calcium. And why do you need a lot more calcium in a mesh cover versus a solid cover, Jared? Dilution factors. Exactly. What is the parts per million of calcium hardness in snow, ice, and rain? Uh, that'd be a good zero there. And That's it correct. actually brought up the point of the call this morning because a lot of times when that snow melts and that rain gets in the pool, and a lot of times in these areas when they winterize the pool, they, they plug everything and it's not running at all. Mm -hmm. Well, that water just kind of sits there on that top layer and just melts there. Well, mm -hmm. here in Texas, we don't winterize a pool. So it's running underneath that cover the whole winter. So it's mixing around. Well, in the Midwest, Northeast, you know, Northwest, they're not running. So you're going to have this layer sitting on the top of that pool all winter long that's not being mixed with the water below it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and I I was recommending that the homeowner or the customer put like a sump pump in the bottom of the pool and just just to get some circulation underneath that cover you know a couple of times a week or whenever he thinks about it just to get the water moving and and mixed up a little bit yeah i saw this really cool experiment and i've I gotta find who showed it to me because i haven't been able to find it online since but a guy took uh reagents for ph and showed that ph stratifies in a pool had this cool underwater photo of how the pH changes from the top layer of the water all the way to the bottom. I got to track that down. And if you're listening to this podcast and you're the one who showed me that, I believe it was at the Nespa show in Atlantic City, call us. We would love to talk more about that. I have not been able to find that replicated, but I remember seeing it vividly that pH will stratify in stagnant water. And Jared, as we know, when we talk about uh, calcite crystals and stuff, it's always in stagnant water. Have you ever seen crystals in a pool that circulates all winter long? Uh, very rarely, and they're not as they're not as prominent. They're real small, real, this light sandpaper feel to the surface. I haven't um, seen any. I mean, I know what you're talking about, but I I, I yeah. think they were formed when the water was stagnant, and then they started circulating and couldn't get rid of them. But yeah, I, I maybe I mean, you're I, looking at something different. I don't know. Could be, but the predominant issues with this are stagnant still calm mm -hmm. water that just sits there cold all winter cold water yes yeah that's right so a mesh cover you need a lot more calcium so if your pool is going to freeze we've done a lot of math on this this is not a exact prescription but 
you should have over 500 calcium hardness in that pool before you close it up for the winter time. Now, it doesn't mean you need to put it all in right now in October. You can add more in November. You can add more in December. It's, it's up to you. But as the temperature drops, you need more and more. And you might be thinking, oh, 500 calcium hardness, that's so high. Is it, though? Because if you drop the pool volume by a foot or more, like most po- most pools do, it's going to fill up over the course of the next five months with rain and snow and that has zero calcium in. So you're going to open it up and you're going to probably, hopefully, be in the 300s or even the high 200s on calcium hardness. That's why you need to go so heavy. Yeah. And I was the customer I was talking to this morning said that they were thinking about implementing a winter watch so that they would test the water you know, throughout the winter. And by the way, if you're going to do that, please make sure you remember that when the water temperature gets below 65 degrees, mm-hmm. your test is going to be inaccurate. Warm up the sample, but remember to log the actual temperature with a thermometer. So put the actual temperature of the pool in the Arenda app, but warm up the sample of water before you test it for its chemistry. Yes. Yes. Okay, so that's mesh covers. You need a lot more calcium because you're facing dilution from rain and snow, and you need a lot... uh, Sorry, you don't need as much alkalinity. Uh, Sometimes you don't actually have to raise alkalinity at all because the pH is going to get up to its ceiling, usually about 8.1 to 8.2. Use that to your advantage. Just make sure you have enough calcium. That's the big, that, that if, if you have one other takeaway, if you have a mesh cover, calcium, 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 that's what everyone's deficient in. Get it up. Don't be afraid of it. And if you're adding it in the fall, a splash of SC1000 to pre-chelate that calcium before it goes in solution really helps because if you are putting in in October and the water's, you know, high 70s, if you added a ton of calcium, got up to 500, there's a chance you could temporarily precipitate some of that out and almost form scale or actually form scale. But if you chelate that before it goes in with a little bit of SC, and I say a little bit, Jared, we're talking, I mean, for 25 pounds, what, two ounces of SC1000 is probably plenty to dissolve that? Yeah, I was going to go three to four ounces if that. Well, it's just a splash, really. There's no exact science to it, but you want that bucket to be clear and clearly dissolved before you put it in that. I mean, we're clearly here to sell products, so let's just go ahead and put a gallon in. Oh, yeah, a gallon. Yeah, don't do that. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Although, no, don't do that. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Don't do that. (laughs) Yeah, no, it's just going to wipe out your chlorine. That's not going to be fun. Okay, (laughs) solid covers. Now, there are the automatic ones that are on the tracks and the safety covers. The chemistry is pretty much identical. Uh, The only reason I wanted to mention the automatic ones is because of people that often open them in the wintertime and change the temperature. So let's do the automatic one first. Okay. Um, I, this season alone, I had at least two pools with the exact same problem and they were on opposite sides of the country. One was in New Jersey and one was in California. And they had the exact same problem that another pool a year or two prior had the surface was getting destroyed. I mean, it looked terrible. And it was a relatively new surface. It was probably two years old, maybe, maybe three. And it just looked completely etched out. Come to find out, there's an automatic pool cover. Well, if you have an automatic pool cover, when you close it, you're suppressing the pH because the CO2 can't get out. Not necessarily a bad thing for pH control, but what happens if you're doing that through the winter time? It's really cold. Maybe your water's down to the 50 degrees or 40 degrees um, in, you know, November or whatever it is. And you say, hey, you know what? We want to use the pool. So you go over and you fire up the heater. Then you open it up and you swim in this heated pool that's 80 something degrees and it's steaming because it's cold outside. And it's a great fun. I can't judge because when I was a kid, uh, a neighbor down the street had a pool like this and it was just revolutionary for us. We, We never had a pool growing up. And so... When they opened it up, and it was right around Thanksgiving time, all of us on the street went to this pool. It was so cool. And it you know steaming. It felt like a hot tub. The problem with that is after everyone gets out, gr- granted, you just had a 30-plus degree swing in water temperature in hours. Now you shut off the heater because you're done with the party, and you close up the lid. Jared, what do you think that does to the chemistry? Guarantee there were probably not any chemical adjustments made before that uh, lid was closed because number one, we just had a bather load increase and two, you splashed out a lot of CO2. You did, but the temperature is going to go right back down. Absolutely. And by getting that CO2 out, 
in a good, you know, that's not necessarily a bad thing. The pH went way up, but you're closing it up and it doesn't have a chance to get back up to where it needs. And the temperature is about to drop another 30 degrees within a day or two, maybe, maybe three days, whatever it takes. That is a radical change in your LSI, and a pool cannot sustain that. So the water has to find equilibrium because you're basically containing it under this automatic cover, and it's going to eat. And it's going to eat that plaster surface and destroy it. And then when the temperature rises again, a lot of that can get carbonated. It'll turn white. Now, I'm sure you've seen this. I know I saw it several times. Uh, this year alone, two pools in particular really looked awful. And largely it's because this temperature change closing the cover, opening the cover, suppressing the pH, releasing all the CO2 all at once. It's not the best thing. So a pro tip, if you're going to use your pool in the wintertime, not saying don't do it, leave the lid off for about a day after you're done. Let the CO2 get out, let it run its course, drop that temperature back down, then close it. Then you're not doing this steep roller coaster thing. You're just going up and you're going down. As long as you have the ability to test the water, you know where your calcium hardness is, you can go back to cold. That would really take the edge off on these automatic covered pools. Do you agree with that? Or you're, you're kind of shaking your head maybe? I do. I'm just thinking of logistics because it's cold outside, Eric. People aren't going to want to mess with this and take three days and we're, we're a get it, get it on and turn the heater on and swim and close it up. But I agree. It is you, you're managing extremes in this scenario you're going from one extreme and days later the other so mm. don't don't be mad or just be considerate the fact that you're going to have to manage something mm -hmm. oh yeah and it's going to destroy your surface if you don't do it right and don't say we didn't tell you so it's it's not your service technician's fault it's temperature and co2 that are not able to harmonize like they normally would if the pool were open so just keep that in mind it can absolutely tear up a cement based surface and it can fade a vinyl liner it could do all sorts of stuff so that's why i wanted to include the automatic cover but because it's a solid cover the last one we're going to talk about is a solid safety cover this is the exact same style cover as a, as a mesh one it's you know you can put a car on it if you had to but it doesn't let any water in and it doesn't let any co2 out and as a result you don't need quite as much calcium we still would recommend over 400 just simply based on temperature, but you're not going to have that dilution and, you know, unless there's a hatch in the middle of it, which can allow some water in, in which case you do need more calcium. But the thing is CO2 is not going to escape. So Jared, let's think about this. If we follow the textbooks, not the Arenda way, but the textbooks, the textbooks say you got to winterize at what pH range? They would say, keep it in ideal range of 7.4 to 7.6. Exactly right. So if you are closing the pool and you put it to 7.4 to 7.6, and you close it up with a solid cover, what do you think the pH is going to be of that pool when you open it, if nothing else changes? Well, I would hope, since we've been talking about Henry's Law and having a solid cover on there, hopefully it's between 7.4 and 7.6. Yes, on paper it should be. How often do you think that actually happens, though? Not very. I don't think it's ever happened. Yeah. And well, well, on a on a plaster type pool. Sorry, maybe on a fiberglass or a vinyl liner. And the reason for that is, as the temperature drops, so too does the LSI. The water has to get into equilibrium. So what's it going to eat, Jared? It really loves calcium. That's, That's what the LSI right. is all about. And you pull out Remember, calcium hydroxide, pH goes way we've up. Been accused. We've been accused of this before. The LSI and calcium, and what is it all about? The LSI is about calcium, everybody. Mm -hmm. calcium carbonate saturation so the water's hungry now on paper it should stay 7.4 to 7.6 because co2 cannot escape it's kind of like capping your beer keeping the co2 in the beer okay makes sense but as the temperature drops water gets hungry it eats pulls out calcium hydroxide you open up and you've got winter dust everywhere and that happens because the ph spiked and the water only found its equilibrium on its own and as the water heats up, it precipitates. It looks like plaster dust everywhere. Or you get crystals if the water was stagnant as well. Not a good scene. So pro tips on winterizing with a solid cover. You want to take a stab at this? I'm putting you on the spot because I don't think I've discussed this with you before. I don't know if you have, but I'm just going to go with pro tips are I'm still a big fan of the winter watch with periodically checking the, the mm -hmm. 
the water to make sure it's balanced. I'm a huge fan of putting a sump pump or two in the bottom of the pool and having it on a timer to flip on a couple of minutes every day just to keep it moving and mm -hmm. not stagnate. Um, I would also definitely recommend keeping that uh, calcium level up above 400, probably mm -hmm. to closer to 500 um, and keep that pH at, you know, 7.8. What's wrong with that? Mm -hmm. Well, all those are good tips. What I was going to say is adjust your chemicals at least a day before you put the cover on. Let your pH naturally rise up to, like he said, about 7, 8 to 8, 0, or even a little bit higher if you want to. If not, you need more alkalinity. If, you're, if you have to close it that day and you, you don't have another chance to get back there and your alkalinity is at 80, raise it to 100. And the reason you want that is because you need more carbonates in your water to insulate it for the wintertime because you're basically sealing the crypt and walking away. You'd rather have the extra alkalinity in there so that you can pull that pH up, even though you can't lose CO2. You need some buffering mechanism in there Whereas in a mesh cover, it, it doesn't necessarily matter as much because you have a lot more calcium and the CO2 escapes, so your pH rises. You don't have that benefit in a solid cover. So give it time. Let the pH rise up and, you know, keep the water circulating. Then you show up. Just don't adjust the pH on that last day, maybe. If you have questions about this or anything else, reach out to us. Call your local rep from Arenda. Find our dealer locator list. Find somebody who understands our program. It's on our website. It's pretty easy. I believe it's in our app, and if it's not yet, it will be soon. Um, we're here to help you. We're here to support you. And for all of you homeowners listening, thank you so much for listening. For all you service techs out there, and I know that that's a growing group of our audience because you all are the ones who reach out with ideas of what to cover on this podcast, and this was pretty well requested. So, yeah, I'm Eric with Arenda. Jared, thank you for joining me. And this is our 40th episode. Who awesome. knows what it's we're going to talk good. about next? Told you we were going to crush it. I think we, we crushed this one. Yeah, this one went pretty quick. Thanks, everybody. Enjoy. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for listening to Rule Your Pool, a podcast by Arenda Technologies. For more information on what we discussed in this week's episode, check the links in the description or visit www.arendatech.com. I hope you find this show valuable enough that you tap that subscribe button and share it with your friends. You can also like us on Facebook and social media. And with our help, you'll be able to rule your pool without over-treating it with chemicals and wasting money. I'll see you next episode.